Hello everyone, I'm going to present Saturno, a suite of lightweight symmetric algorithms for post-quantum security. This is joint work be between Anne Canto, Sébastien Duval, Gaëtan Laurent, Marianne Plaisancia, Léo Perrin, Thomas Pornin, and some guy behind the mask. So first I'm going to make an introduction and uh, explain our design goals. Second, we're going to see the specification of the block cipher. And finally, we'll uh, see the modes of operation that we propose to use. All right. So we had three main design goals in mind. First of all, we want a cipher with strong security arguments. So we're going to use an SPN cipher and a white trace strategy, just like in the AES. But we also want quantum security. Um, which forces us to use 256-bit keys, but also blocks uh, of the same size, and also carefully chosen modes uh, with uh, quantum security arguments. We also want the cipher to be efficient in hardware and software, which is why we have a bit size design, and we build up the cipher, although it has a big block size, from very small components, like 4-bit boxes and so on. So currently in the uh, lightweight crypto process, there are 13 second round candidates that are based on block ciphers. And if you look at all the block ciphers that are used, uh, Saturn is the only one that uses 256 bit blocks. It's also the only proposal, including the cipher and the modes of operation, that claims security against uh, quantum adversaries and superposition queries, where the adversary can basically encrypt the quantum state. So we think that Saturn is also the most efficient transition of the AES design strategy to a bigger block size of 256 bits. Whether in terms of security, because we obtain a very good balance using the white trace strategy here, or in terms of implementation, because it's going to be a bit sliced by design. So about quantum security, first of all, uh, we really need to use a key of 256 bits to avoid quantum exhaustive search uh, with Crover's algorithm, um, which is also why AES-256 is often recommended for post-quantum security. Second, we wanted to use a block size of 256 bits to avoid also quantum attacks, especially on the modes of operation, at the quantum birthday bound, which is, in our case, uh, 2 to the 85.3. It also turned out that using such a block size is going to simplify uh, the design of most of our modes, especially of a hash function. So we're going to claim security against classical and quantum attacks. Quantum attackers can query the secret key cipher or the modes in superposition. As I said, they can encrypt quantum states. This is a very strong model, but it's also the strongest available, and it's non-trivial, meaning that we can obtain security in such a model. It's also nice because it includes all intermediate definitions and possibly all use cases. For example, you think of, uh, I don't know, implementing a white box uh, version of such a one. So about the name, uh, first of all, such a is a famous French duck. It's a hero of the TV series Les Aventures de Saturnin, a series uh, that was meant for the kids uh, it's made from real-life footage of animals, which are then dubbed. And the main character, which is a duck, looks like the picture here, which is from Wikipedia. Personally, I find it a bit scary. But if you're not afraid of a duck that talks in French, you can still look at the episodes on the internet. We also know that ducks have been historically used uh, as standard of likeness, as reported in the movie Monty Python of the Holy Grail. Basically, a duck is light, uh, lightweight because, um, because it floats. Or maybe because it's made of wood. I'm not sure anymore. Also, uh, the planet Saturn is, going to, is, is associated to the cube in Kepler's cosmography, which is nice because Saturn's state is going to be represented as a cube. So that was my transition. 
let's have a look at the specification of the block cipher, and especially this cube state. So the state of Saturn is represented as a cube, 4x4x4 four by four by four nibbles of 4 bits, and there is an equivalent representation as 16 registers of 16 bits. And the main uh, thing to, to know is that the colon in the cube is going to correspond to a colon in these registers, so one bit of each register. If you're familiar with the AES, the operations that we apply in Saturn look a bit the same. Uh, there are little differences everywhere. So we're first going to start uh, with an S-box layer. We're going to apply um, uh, an S-box sigma 0 to nibbles of even index and an S-box sigma 1 to nibbles of odd index. These are two different S-boxes, but they are actually the same up to a permutation of the output bits. Then we have a nibble permutation, which is going to depend on the round number. I'm going to go into the details uh, right away. We have a linear mixed columns that applies to every column in the cube, and this is an MDS mapping. We apply the inverse of this nibble permutation, and we have the subkey addition. So the nibble permutation depends on the round index, round index which starts at zero, of course. If uh, the round index is one modulo four, then we shift rows in the slices of the cubes. The slices are here on the left. If the round index is three modulo four, we shift rows in sheets of the cube. They are here on the right. So shift rows, like in the AES, we uh, like like this. If uh, R is uh, zero or two modulo four, we do nothing. So shift rows is uh, the, these shift row operations only going to intervene uh, every two rounds. If we uh, look at the register representation, all of these operations have good bit slice implementations. So the S-box and the mix columns are actually going to be very simple. Mix columns is going to apply on 16 bits, on one bit of each register here, because this is a column in the cube, if you remember. Uh, S-boxes are going to apply on four bits of each register um, because this corresponds to a nibble. And the shift, uh, shift rows in slices and sheets corresponds to rotations in the registers. Well, the rotations are different, of course, but this can still be uh, implemented in this way. So for slices, we need to rotate uh, inside registers, we need to rotate each packet of four bits uh, like this. And in sheets, we need to uh, rotate each register uh, by a multiple of four bits. The subkey additions occurs only at odd rounds, uh, as I said. So if so every every two uh, every two rounds, we're going to XOR a key. Either the key, the master key K, rotated by twenty nibbles, either the master key itself. And every two rounds, we have no key addition. There are round constants, uh, of course, and there are going to be two sixteen-bit words, which are XORed to the state and they touch 32 nibbles in total. So one bit of one constant goes to uh, one nibble. These one constants are generated by LFSRs and they depend on the domain separator, which is another parameter of four bits, which allows to define independent uh, variants of Saturna to use for our modes of operation, which are going to be represented as ducks of different colors. Now let's go to the super S box representation of the cipher. We're going to take this cube. Uh, cube is nice, but two dimensions is better. So we're going to squeeze it. And the super nibbles in the super S box representation are going to be the columns of the cube. So there are 16 bits. Now let's have a look at four rounds of Saturn. 
The first round is applying uh, the other box layer and mixed columns, and there is no shift rows and no key addition. Round one applies an S box layer, and then there is shift rows, but it slices, mixed column, uh, shift rows, slices, inverse, addition of the key. Then we have uh, the S box layer, mixed columns, S box layer, and shift rows, and mixed columns in the sheets. So actually, this corresponds to a sequence of operations performed on this, uh, this state, this equivalent state, where the nibbles correspond to columns in the cube. There is a super S box which applies to the columns. So this is uh, S box, mixed column, S box. There is a linear transformation on the super columns in the cube, which means. Uh, and the supercolors in the square, which means um, this slices, mix colon slices. There is a key addition, rotated key addition. There is another super S box. And then there is the same linear transformation as before, but on the super rows, because we are now transforming in the sheets of the cube. And then there is a key addition, which means that four rounds of Saturna correspond to two rounds in some big AES construction. So two rounds of Saturna are actually a single round of uh, something that looks like an AES operating on 16-bit nibbles with a transposition instead of a shift rows. So it's like a bit like the block cipher square. And it's also had, it also has a different uh, key schedule. This is why we need to reuse 10 super rounds for standard Saturna because the attacks we're going to have on standard Saturna um, actually look like the attacks on uh, AES-128. For related key security, we're going to recommend 16 super rounds. This is a variant uh, Saturna. And uh, the best key recovery we managed to, to write uh, targeted 7.5 super rounds of Saturna. So super round means two round, but it looks like it looks like a single round of, of an AES, a big AES. So most of the uh, security analysis uh, of the AES that has been performed uh, is going to be transferable to Saturna. We also have uh, white tree arguments that apply very nicely, and we can have, uh, for example, we have. 125 active S-boxes for eight rounds. The four-bit S-box that we just has optimal uh, differential linear properties. The super S-box has good properties that come from the NTS layer and also from the choice of uh, small S-boxes. And we can have bonds for differential and linear characteristics on eight on trace. Now let's have a look at the modes of operation that we proposed. So the submission includes three modes of operation, Saturna counter cascade, Saturna short, Saturna hash. And we're going to use separate ground constants, uh, so separate values of the domain separator for all of these modes. So they are dictated by the quantum security proofs uh, that, we, that we found in the literature. So encrypt then Mac uh, is going to be a nice construction. Uh, the counter mode for encryption has a proof of security, the cascade MAC also, and uh, there is a proof of indifferentiability of the merkel damgal construction in the quantum setting. Now let's start with the simplest, set on a short. You want to encrypt a single block of less of than 128 bits, or maybe of exactly 128 bits, because it's uh, only a matter of reducing the nonce size just concatenate the nonce and the message and we encrypt. So the ciphertext and the tag are not two separate values, it's just a single value of 256 bits. And it's very efficient because it only refers to call Saturna once. Saturna counter cascade is our main proposal, so we combine uh, with the encrypt then Mac construction the counter mode and a cascade Mac which looks like 
and Mac or HMAC. So in the counter mode, we simply have to uh, concatenate the nonsense and counter we encrypt. Uh, in the Cascade Mac, we use several uh, different variants of Saturna with different domain separators. We process the associated data, then we process the ciphertext and we produce a tag. Under an assumption of that Saturn is a quantum pseudorandom permutation, uh, the counter mode is indistinguishable under quantum chosen messages uh, attacks, and the cascade mic is also unforgeable. Well, these are the security proofs uh, from the literature. For the hash function, we propose to use a merkel damgard construction with the Matthias Meyer Oseras mode. And for this, we need a cipher which is related key secure. So we take uh, the variant with 16 superruns, Faturna. And we're going to uh, simply have uh, a, um, a state of 256 bits, which allows and a hash value of 256 bits, which allows a uh, classical birthday bound at 200 and uh, 2 to the 128 for finding classical collisions. Uh, quantum birthday bound uh, now is at 2 to the 85.3, but we're going to make uh, a slightly higher uh, security claim, which is partially conjectural, uh, using the fact that quantum collision algorithms are usually memory intensive, and that if you want to go to this bound, 2 to the 85.3, you need to use an algorithm that uses a lot of uh, quantum RAM and quantum memory. So we're just making a stronger partially conjectural security claim that depends on the adversary's quantum memory, which of course we assume to be uh, at least one qubit. About performance, so the plug cipher has a rather small gate count uh, in software, such a cascade, sit, uh, counter cascade performs um, um, as good as uh, the AES, but it has also a higher block size and a higher uh, and, a, and a bigger analysis and bigger blocks and so on. Uh, such a hash performs very well on the microcontroller benchmarks of Rice Weatherly's. And Saturna short is also very competitive for short messages because it only requires to call Saturna once. So we have performed a preliminary study of the relative key security of Saturna, but we need to know more about uh, the 16 super round version. We know that it has a simpler key schedule than the AES, which may be exploited, uh, and we really want to, to know what are the best classical reducer attacks and quantum attacks. So not only uh, because we use this in, uh, Fatuana, uh, in the Saturna hash, but also because we, in the update, we propose to use this uh, with Saturna QCB. So the QCB mode is a quantum uh, secure rate one mode, uh, which is similar to Theta CB, but it's based on a tweakable block cipher. And we propose to use for this tweakable block cipher, Fatuana uh, in which you XOR the tweak with the key which needs, of course, to be completely rated key secure. So to conclude, we wanted to uh, show that post-quantum security and lightweightness are not two orthogonal constraints, and that we may obtain the best of both worlds. So we chose a block cipher of 256 bits, which is the only one in the uh, lightweight process, and we chose well-known modes with quantum security guarantees. And well, Saturna also offers a very high classical security and also has very nice uh, white tree arguments. Now, although Saturna, so the variant with 16 superons, is not used in the primary proposal, uh, we would like to know more about its related key security for the hash function and for Saturna QCP. And um, we, want, we really want to invite people to perform third party uh, Cryptanalysis, and we're going to open a challenge soon. It's going to be announced as a RAM session. So, yeah, see you at the RAM session for the opening of the challenge, and thank you for your attention.